in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to destroy every single boss in the second sea. And starting off the very first boss that we got in the second sea is the diamond boss. This boss is a level 750 boss and he's located at the kingdom of Rose and he spawns next to this humongous tree. He spawns in around every 30 minutes and the weapon that he uses is the cutlass. But the weird thing is that he actually uses the moves of the long sword, which literally makes no sense. How can you hold one weapon and use the moves of another one? It just doesn't add up. But anyways, moving on to his actual stats. He has a total of 43,750 HP and he does around 100 to 500 damage depending on what ability he hits you with. The first ability he can hit you with is called Annihilate, where he just surrounds himself with diamond slashes that can literally do damage to anything that they hit. And the tip to avoid this is just back up. Honestly, stay away from him. Then we got the glorious smash ability where it just teleports him a short distance and he leaves behind this small white blur and then he grabs you and slams you straight into the ground and the way you can avoid this move is just by dashing frequently or just try and jump in the air a bit he can't really hit you that much mid-air if you kill this guy after accepting the quest you're gonna get a total of 25,000 belly as well as 12 million 500 thousand xp and that's just a huge amount and if you kill him normally you get around 1,000 to 2,000 belly with 100,000 xp so make sure you equip the quest when you find him if you want to get literally like 10 times the rewards literally when you kill him he also has a chance of giving you the long sword which isn't that bad of a sword at least compared to the first C. it might be one of the worst swords in the second C though moving on the next boss that i got here is the jeremy boss this boss is level 850 and since this guy is based off a character in one piece that uses the spring fruit he obviously also uses the spring fruit in game he has a total of 34,250 hp and does around 975 to 1100 damage per hit which is honestly pretty crazy and the most difficult thing about fighting this boss is actually finding out where he spawns at no one can find this location normally you literally you have to climb all the way to the top of this giant hill and then you're finally going to find this arena and since he has the spring fruit you might think that he can actually use all the moves of it but this is a rule that most bosses in the game follow they can only use a maximum of two abilities of a fruit if they have one equipped which means that jeremy boss can only use two abilities of the spring fruit the first one is the spring snipe ability where he kind of just dashes towards you and deals a bit of damage to you and a tip to avoid this is just to dash around and just honestly keep your distance from him then we got the spring cannon ability where he basically turns his legs into springs and jumps straight into the sky and then slams right back down into you and a tip to avoid this is just to keep your distance just try and use the hidden dash method and if you don't know what that method is it's basically where you just hit an npc and just dash backwards before they can do any damage to you this way you can kind of bait out his attacks so if you dash towards him hit him and dash back and he ends up using an ability then you can easily dodge him but anyways once you destroy this boss you have a chance of getting the black spiky code accessory and if you don't know what this accessory is it basically gives you 200 energy 200 health and a 7.5 increase in your overall damage which is honestly pretty decent especially for an accessory that you just get from defeating a boss once you defeat this guy with the quest he's gonna give you a total of 25,000 belly as well as 6 million XP. Damn, that's a huge amount. And if you defeat this guy normally without the quest, you get only around a thousand belly, which honestly isn't that great. And a pretty cool thing about this boss is that you can actually find the Don Swan spawn room underneath him, which is honestly pretty cool. And you can literally see the boss if you activate your instinct. Moving on, the next boss that I got here is Fajita. This boss is level 925, and he spawns in at the green zone at this kind of rocky looking area. He has a total of two weapons. The first one is the gravity fruit, or at least the old version of it. And he also uses a sword called the gravity cane. He has a total of 40,000 625 HP and he does around 1000 to 1100 damage per hit, which is honestly really really crazy and when you kill him you have a chance of getting a meteorite which is an item you can use to upgrade weapons and you also have a chance of getting the gravity cane sword the sword that he literally uses to fight you which is honestly a pretty cool looking sword and if you're wondering which abilities of the old gravity fruit he uses the gravity push ability as well as the meteor rain ability the gravity push ability just creates a pretty strong gravitational field in front of him that launches you backwards and the second ability meteors rain it's basically he shoots a purple beam into the sky and then he just rains down meteors and the way you can avoid the meteor rain is honestly pretty simple you just use all of your air jumps and just keep dashing in the sky so you stay there because the meteors only do damage when they actually hit the ground so if you're off the ground then you should be good once you defeat this guy he gives you a total of 25,000 belly as well as 9 million xp with the quest which is honestly really really crazy and keep in mind you also have a chance of getting the cool sword he has anyways moving on the next boss that i got here is the dawn swan boss and this guy's actually a part of the quest to getting into the third c so he's actually the final boss that you're going to be fighting in the second c let me stop yapping and tell you how to defeat this guy the first thing you should know about him is that he He's literally level 1000, which means he's already pretty powerful. He also has a total of 26,000 HP, or that's what you would believe when you first fight him. He actually has two different forms, and he evolves into the second one when he's low on HP, which means he has a total of 52,000 HP, and he does around 1,342 damage per hit. That's just crazy. He also has a chance of dropping you the Swan Glasses accessory, which is honestly a really, really good accessory. It gives you a 25% increase in your movement speed, increases your overall damage by 8%, and it decreases your skills cooldown by 8%. It also increases your defense by 8%, and gives
gives you 250 energy as well as 250 health. And it also looks really, really cool. And unlike most other bosses in the game, this guy can actually use a butt ton of abilities. And the first one he can use is an ability called Cross Spider Attack, which is obviously from the spider fruit, where he just summons a butt ton of strings and he just kind of impales you with them. To avoid this, you just have to keep spamming your dashes either to the left or to the right, anywhere away from his ability. Then he uses another ability called Ultimate Thread, which is yet another ability of the spider fruit. For this one, a bunch of strings just come together and they start going out in all directions. And the way you can dodge this is literally just with instinct. Instinct works really well on this ability. The next ability is also one from the spider fruit. It's called Overheated Sniper, where he shoots a thick bullet that's made out of string, which is honestly a pretty cool ability. And you can also avoid this one with instinct, which makes it really useful. And another ability that you can use is actually Flash Step, which means if you get too far away from him, then he's actually going to teleport straight to you, which is honestly pretty dangerous. So you need to know how to fight this guy. And another thing you should know before fighting him is that his second form is actually a lot more powerful than his first form. If you barely survived his first form and you're literally at like 10 HP, then I don't recommend fighting his second form. You're probably not going to be winning. But anyways, when you defeat this guy, you actually get access to a boat called the Guardian, which is honestly a pretty decent boat. You also get a total of 10,000 belly, as well as the ability to evolve your race to V3. And the final thing is obviously you get access to the third C, which is honestly the most important part about fighting this guy. Moving on, the next boss that I got here is the Smoke Admiral. This guy is a level 1,150 boss, and he's obviously based off Smoker, which means he has the Smoke Fruit, as well as the Jitte Sword. This boss has a total respawn time of 20 minutes, so it isn't that long compared to some other bosses. He has a total of 27,000 HP, which makes him pretty hard to fight, because he has a sword, a fruit, and also that much HP. And unlike most other bosses, this guy can also use three different abilities. The first one is World of Smokes, where he just stuns you with smokes. Then we got Crawling Smoke, where he turns into smoke and dashes towards you. Then we got the Smoke Leopard ability, where he fires a smoke projectile that deals damage over time, if you're standing in the place that it landed. The place that you can find this guy is on the hot side of the hot and cold island, in this huge dark building. Once you end up defeating this guy, you're gonna get a total of 9,000 to 10,000 belly, as well as 800,000 XP. And you also have a chance of getting the Jitte Sword dropped to you, but it's not guaranteed, so you're probably gonna have to grind him a couple times just to get your hands on that sword. The next boss that I got here is the Awakened Ice Admiral, and this guy's literally level 1,400. And the place that you can find him at is the Ice Castle. It's literally massive, you cannot miss it. And this guy uses two different things. The first one is the combat fighting style, which is honestly pretty basic, but he does do a lot of damage. And he also uses the Awakened version of the Ice Fruit. He has a total of 47,000 HP, which makes him incredibly difficult to fight. And the best thing you can do against this guy is just using the hit and dash method, where you just hit him and dash backwards, and just try to do it as fast as possible, because if he ends up freezing you with his ice attack, then you're probably cooked. But a way that you can actually defeat him faster is by luring him into the room where you get the Rengoku sword, and then you can just flash step outside, and then boom, you can just pummel him through the wall, which is honestly a really overpowered method. Or if you can't get him into that room, just try and get him stuck behind any wall. That just makes it so that he can't do any damage to you, and if the wall is thin enough, then he's only going to be using his M1 attack, so he's never going to use his fruit, which makes it even easier to beat him. Next up, we got one of the most overpowered bosses in the whole sea, and this is the Tide Keeper. He's a level 1,475 boss, and unlike any other boss in the game, this guy literally has an ability to spawn in his sea beast. That is just really OP. He has a total of 107,000 HP. Yeah, you heard that right. 107,000. And he does around 1,675 damage per hit. And he uses the Dragon Trident as his weapon. And you obviously have a chance of getting that once you destroy him. The best method to fight this guy is to honestly stay away from his long range spam attacks because those are the ones that do a lot of damage. And a pretty cheesy trick you can use against him is if he spawns in a sea beast, then literally just reset your character. When you reset your character and come back, the sea beast is gonna have despawn, which means you can fight him a lot easier. But just make sure you get there pretty fast or else he's gonna heal back to max HP. Another thing you can abuse to kill him is the Buddha fruit, but many people don't have access to that, so this is honestly a pretty hard trick to use. Once you defeat this guy, you're gonna get a total of 10,000 belly as well as 800,000 to 900,000 XP. And he also has a chance of giving you the water key, which is actually something you need to get a fighting style called Sharkman Karate, which is the best fighting style for grinding in the whole game. But that's pretty much 